Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews Now 2, and today I'm going to show you how to install the Arctic Freezer 33 onto an Intel 1151 version 1 or version 2 chipset. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to install the Freezer 33, which is a fantastic cooler, um, onto this extremely budget Pentium Gold G5400 processor. Now this process is going to be the same for all the uh, 1151 version 1 and 2 sockets. So if you're using a 8700K or something completely different, this is the same process. Uh, so just obviously adjust it slightly for your personal motherboard or processor. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is our components. So we've got our MX4 thermal compound, we've got our processor cooler, We've got a processor and we've got a motherboard. Now the motherboard in this particular instance is the uh, ASRock H310M HDV slash M.2. And this is brand new, just come onto the market a couple of, about a couple of weeks ago. So I thought I'd give it a try along with all this budget stuff. So anyway, I'm going on too much. Now you're probably wondering why are you installing a Freezer 33 onto a, a G5400? Now, that cooler is almost 20% or more of the purchase price of the actual processor. Now, there's a very good reason for that, because if you're using the stock cooler that comes with these Intel chips, generally they're rated only a few uh, watts above the actual thermal limit of the chip. So, therefore, you're always going to be running almost at full capacity of what it can cool. If you're using this in any form of uh, entertainment system, be it a, me a media center, or for watching movies in your bedroom, or even for gaming, you want to try and keep the noise as little as possible so you're not completely distracted. Now the Arctic Freezer 33 has technology within the actual fan itself that if it gets below a certain temperature, i.e. 40 degrees I believe it is, the fan just won't spin. It will be completely fine passively cooling your processor. So if you're just doing light tasks, then you should find that the fan won't actually spin therefore giving you a pretty much silent PC. So anyway, that's the background of why we're doing this. Let's get on and install it. Okay, so first things first, included in the package is this uh, rather nice looking backplate with the uh, Arctic logo on it. So if we flip the board over, Now you see on the bottom there, there's a little cutout and that matches up with the screw on the bottom. With a little bit of persuasion, you should find that the back plate stays in place. So now with the back plate in place, we've got four mounting screw holes for which to attach our cooler. So let's put the uh, the processor in, so release the tension on the socket and now we can install our nice shiny CPU. So with the notches that are cut out of the CPU, line those up with the, uh, with the socket and gently drop it into position, making sure that it's in there snugly. Then you can lower the uh, lower the clamp and attach the spring. This will then pop off the cover, put that in the motherboard box, keep it somewhere safe in case you ever need to return the board. So next, it's time for the threes of 33. Okay, so we've done the uh, mounting of the CPU onto the board. Now it's time to get this ready. So, as you've probably guessed, I've used this uh, cooler before because it hasn't got any heat paste or anything on it. And the fan's connected, etc. So, the first thing we need to do is remove the fan to gain access to these screws on the bottom. So, all we do is flick up the spring clamp and the fan comes away nice and easy. So now we have to release the screws on both sides and put them somewhere safe. You don't want to be losing these at this time. Okay, so that's our screws removed. 
Now on the actual cooler base, there's a slot next to the screw, and that is where our mounting brackets will uh, rest in place. So in the kit, you get these kind of universal brackets, uh, you use them that way round for Intel, and you use them that way round for AMD, and there's three, slot, uh, three holes, AM4, AM3, 1151 and 2011, I think. So put the clamps on with the, uh, the holes on the outer side. And then get your screwdriver and you can put your screws back in. Now with this a magnetic screwdriver is probably gonna make life a little bit easier for you. Once you get it to the bottom, don't over tighten it, just uh, give it another little little cinch, I think they call it. Is that the technical term, cinch? Let me know in the comments if that's the technical term. Okay, so that's the screws connected. Now the CPU is pretty much ready, uh, sorry, the CPU cooler is pretty much ready to go on the board. Now, what we can do now is uh, we can add some thermal cooling paste. Now, in this particular instance, I'm going to be replacing what was actually on there originally, which is the uh, Arctic MX4. So we're going to put a little blob of that on there. Now, we don't need a particularly great uh, amount of this. A little blob should be absolutely fine. Again, it's a very low TDP CPU, so it doesn't need a great deal of thermal compound. And in fact, it doesn't need a great deal of cooling. So, let's put a little blob on there. So we've got a little dollop of MX4 on there. I'm not sure if I like that word. Anyway, moving on. So let's put the, uh, the cooler on. Now there's one thing I did actually think of previously when I was mounting this cooler. Looking at the top, you've got the vents there. So does it go that way or does it go that way? Now I'm sure that that would affect airflow one way or the other. So I'm thinking that if airflow goes in that way, due to how the pipes are organized, that will kind of filter the air inwards and create a faster vortex coming out. Vortex, good word. So I'm going to do it this way round. If I'm wrong, <laughs> I do apologize, but hey, it's a good cooler. It shouldn't really make much difference which way it goes around in this particular instance. So that is the way I'm going to do it, I think. Actually, I'm going to do it the other way, because the number theory is if the fan is blowing in that way with the fins in that arrangement, the air is going to spread out and cool across all the fins, maybe. Yeah, I'm going to try it that way instead. Put in the comments if you think I'm doing it right or I'm doing it wrong. No doubt I'll uh, manage to upset somebody in this video. So when you've got the CPU on top, you can line it up with the holes just by visually looking down through. And now we have to use one of the sets of screws. Now, there are three sets of screws in this little baggie. Uh, one for AM4, one for the uh, 2011, and one which is for the Intel. Now the Intel one, if I remember rightly, is the one with the finer thread. So fingers crossed and a little prayer and a Hail Mary. Yeah, this should be the right one. Okay, so my suggestion would be to only put the screws in um, just so they're almost about to pinch. So what I mean by that is tighten them down, take off all of the slack just until the screw makes contact with the base. 
and then move on to the next one. That way, if you need any adjustment, you've still got a little bit of wiggle room. to be joined by a moth. Welcome to Mike's Unboxing. You better have subscribed. Okay, so we're putting the last screw in now. And for the uh, slightly anally retentive, you can now make sure that everything is lined up nicely. Good job. So now you can go ahead and tighten up the screws in a crisscross pattern. When I say crisscross, I don't mean the uh, the guys in the video used to wear their pants back to front. Three minutes. Okay, so that's the screws all nice and tight, and now we can just go ahead and reattach the fan. Now, first of all, we can reattach the fan header. Now these fans do come with a uh, like a PWM splitter. So you can actually attach another fan. So if you're in a system where you're lacking um, PWM ports or headers, whatever you want to call them, fan headers, uh, if you use one of these, you can actually attach in another fan to the same header as PWM sharing technology. So you connect the header to your PWM CPU cooler header, and then you can attach the fan to the brackets or clips. Now, fortunately, with this cooler, if you've got any issues with RAM clearance because of where it is mounted, uh, the clips are pretty much pretty uh, pliable, so you can put them pretty much wherever you want. And if you're not using the splitter, you can always just tuck it behind the motherboard when you install it, or just tuck it underneath. So there we go. That is the fantastic looking. Arctic Freezer 33 installed on a Intel 1151 version 2 board. I say this is the for the Coffee Lake chipset, but you can use this with pretty much any chipset. Um, if you go to where are we? Where if you go to where's their address? If you go to um, well Arctic.ac, www.arctic.ac, have a look at their products, some really good stuff. Uh, I've always used them for many years since the uh, the early 2000s when the uh, original Arctic freezers came out and the uh, Alpine coolers, which were really good. And they seem to be getting better and better. So uh, I highly recommend them. Uh, go and check them out. But that's been able to install the Freezer 33 on an Intel board. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. If you've got any comments, put them in the comments section below. If you like this video, click on like. If you dislike, click on dislike. If your comment is a little bit more complicated than a simple like or dislike, then hit me up in the comment section and let me know what you're thinking. I will see you in the very next video. Thanks very much for watching.